You are charged with the offense of threats to kill, contrary to section 223 of the Penal Code, chapter 63 of the laws of Kenya, in that you, Betty Mani, on diverse days in the months of January and February 2009, did without lawful excuse, utter and directly cause Angel Momo to receive threats that you would kill her. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Consul? I wish to go on record for the accused. My name is Elsie Kamon, and if it pleases Your Honor, I wish to address you on bail. Your Honor, my client has never been charged in her life, not even for a traffic offense. She's a mother of two minors below 10 and a businesswoman who has created employment for many. She's unlikely to abscond. My client is a resident of this city and promises that if admitted to bail, she will dutifully comply with whatever terms your honor may impose. I pray that she be released on bail pending the hearing and determination of this case. What does uh, the prosecution have to say? We are opposed to bail, Your Honor. Your grounds? We have not uh, completed our investigations, and we fear that the accused, who is very influential, may interfere with the process and witnesses. So you'll have to do better than that. Is that all? Well, uh, <laughs> I leave it to the court. <clears throat> After hearing both of you and uh, considered your brief submissions, I'm inclined to grant bail. The same being set at 100,000 Kenya shillings. I am most obliged, Your Honor. Very well. The hearing shall commence on Thursday the 19th of this month at 2 p.m. The court is in recess for half an hour. So what may Let's proceed to our chambers for a brief meeting. I need to know all the details pertaining to this case. Yes. That is high, considering that is circumstances. I thought so. The hearing has been set for the 19th. 19th? Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll have enough time to prepare a good defense. I hope we can with them, as I had advised. Yes, they're at the reception. We need to take instructions on related matters, on the damages suits. 
as well as the maintenance action, which I propose we consolidate as uh, soon as possible before the hearing. What about Angel? Oh yes, she was in the courtroom today, morning, and her presence seemed to cause the money some visible discomfort. For our defense, we need to get all the background information we can about Angel. We need to look into her background from the time she was in college up to, up to date. We must convince the court that all she ever wanted was Herbert's money and she would do anything to get her hands on it. I'm sure some of our former boyfriends would testify in our defense. Yeah, and also to show that she was indeed a gold digger. What about the child that they have? Our meal ticket. Her son is over a year old. Doesn't that show that at least Herbert had some commitment to this relationship? It won't look good for us. A child does not prove any commitment. Though it does prove negligent or a planned scheme to ensure that Herbert pays all the bills. A meal ticket. That's all she is. Elsie, I want you to represent them. Get all the relevant statements from all of them and Especially Hubbard. I don't want any surprises in court. Thanks. And also, get a private detective to trace some of our former boyfriends and uh, look into her financial status before she met Hubbard. I'll be in my office. Mrs. Mani, Elsie, come on, is ready to see you. So I'll escort you to the boardroom, if you don't mind. Yeah, hey, I've put some money in an envelope. I'll have somebody deliver it to you in another one hour. Yeah. Yeah, let me know as soon as you get it. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Love you. Mrs. Manny. Betty. Betty. I'd like to start with you. How do you know Angel? I've never met her. Only seen her twice. Once in my husband's phone gallery and I could have sworn she was the one who was swaying her little ass up to the courtroom. Yes, I'll, re I'll recall that. Betty, could you try to remain as unemotional as possible? It'll help us remain focused. Cool. It all started two and a half years back. I started noticing some changes. Frequent late nights. Meetings out of town. Lipstick on his shirt. Perfume. He'd withdrawals from the bank. Betty, please calm down. I'm being charged with threats to kill her. Simply because I'm defending my family. Betty, please. He always had a good excuse. And I believed him. But after a 200,000 withdrawal from the bank, I decided to look into it. Betty, don't worry. I'm just holding myself from slapping him. Good. 200,000? On the day I noticed the check withdrawal, I checked his phone. And I got messages from somebody saved as my angel. <laughs> my angel? of marriage and he has never called me an angel. <laughs> Even as a photo on his phone. What did you do next? I confronted him of course. He confessed to the affair 
and promised never to see her again. So I called this angel of his and told her to stay away from my family. So the first time you discovered the affair, you called her? Yes. And as far as I was concerned, the affair had ended. <laughs> Herbert was even coming home very early. Playing with the children, I was so convinced. <laughs> so I thought. He had actually found a way of being more discreet. I found rent receipts in his shirts when I was taking his clothes to the laundry. So I decided to call this angel of his. I had the number. So I took his phone and called her. He had saved. This angel of his as Mr. Mr. Karani. What happened next? I said an SMS and just told her to stay away from my family or else I'd kill her. That was not going to literally kill her. I know, I know. You did this more than once. Yes, I did it several times. I swear, I didn't know she was pregnant. I didn't know. Until the police came in and charged me. But I need to hear your story. It's just like Betty has put it. Herbert, I need to know the details of your relationship with Angel. Okay, Betty mentioned rent receipts. How long were you paying rent for her? Two years now. What else were you paying for? Food? Utilities? Yeah, that plus all other expenses and her own. I see. And how often were you going to see her? Um, three to four times a week. How about you need to be honest with me? It is a, like I've told you. I mean, I used to take care of all the expenses in the house, including her son. Yes, that son she has is mine. Yeah, I saw that in the suit documents. Yeah, and when Betty found out that I'm still seeing her, I stopped paying her bills. The, the mandates in the bank were changed and any transaction both of us had to sign. Yes, that's where she is suing you. But where are the rest of the receipts? She keeps them all. Apart from the one that uh, Betty found in my jacket. All right. If anything else comes up, please call me and update me. Betty, relax. There's hardly a case against you. Go home and sleep. Herbert. From now on, avoid all communication with her. If she needs to contact you, she will do it through us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. cases. I, I just can't handle the drama. It's too much. You know, it's because of men like you that we have these domestic cases. Why do men behave like that? Huh? Why is it so hard to commit to one woman? Love and cherish her like you so readily promise. Why is it so hard to be faithful? What is the point of getting married? Hey, hey, hey. Don't hate the player. 
Just hate the game. Hmm? I have work to do. Your Honor, I will prove to this court beyond reasonable doubt that Betty Money on several occasions sent short text messages to Angel Momo. These messages scared her so much that she decided to seek police protection. Your Honor, the complainant became a prisoner of her mobile phone. The instrument which Mrs. Money employed to terrorize the complainant. Betty Money needs to be punished for her actions. Can you say? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, Betty Money was never a real danger to Angel Momo. She may have acted out of despair, especially when the complainant relentlessly and shamelessly pursued her husband. Her efforts to separate the two reached a dead end, and she did the next thing she thought could work, and that was to ask Angel Momo to leave her husband alone, by SMS, because Angel never picked any of her calls. To charge Betty with the present offense of threatening to kill the complainant is an overkill on the part of the prosecution, who have elected to make a mountain out of a molehill, as we shall shortly demonstrate. Okay. Are you ready with your first witness, uh, State Counsel? <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. The Republic wishes to call Angel Momo. <clears throat> Do you swear by the Almighty God but the evidence you shall give in this court concerning matters in question shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So God help you. I do. Do you know the accused? Yes, I do. But not in a prison. And for how long have you known her? For three months. She has been sending me bad messages on my mobile. What kind of messages? First, they are just plain, cheap insults that I could ignore without reading to the end. But she later pinned, I mean, she upgraded her messages to be really scary until I had to refer the matter to the police. What made you so scared that you decided to seek police protection? The day she sent me a message and told me she knew exactly where I live. She said she'd send thugs to beat me up until I died. Hmm. Do you know this uh, mobile phone? Yes, this is my phone. Good. Uh, please uh, access your inbox and read for us some of those messages. I have one. When was it sent? <clears throat> On 6th of January. From which number? From hers. Objection. No basis has been laid for such evidence. Your Honor, my apologies. The complainant just jumped the gun a little. I asked you from which number? Oh, 0798-567-00597. Thank you. Please, read the message. I know exactly where you live and I'll beat the living daylights out of you. You're, you're a cheap hoe and stay away from my husband if you don't want any trouble. Are there others? Of course. She used to send me like 10 messages every day. Please, read on. You're a worthless worm. I will squash you with my bare hands. Another one reads. I will tear you into pieces until the vultures won't find you. Husband snatchers don't deserve to live. And the last one, before I went to the police, was people wake up dead. Your Honor, there's so many messages I have deleted. Do you wish to submit these messages and many more
to this court as Exhibit 1? Yes. Accepted. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Counsel, you wish to cross examine? Yes, Your Honor. Angel, how long were you seeing Mrs. Manny's husband? Over two years. During those two years or more, she never communicated with you? Well, please, answer the question. Yes. She spoke to you on phone months ago, warning you to stay away from her husband. I have the records with me. Yes, she had threatened me before. So what was the difference between this last time and all of the rest? It got worse. Worse? <clears throat> she threatened you so many times before, but you opted to report her only this last time. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Angel, you may have your seat. Um, your next witness, State Counsel. Uh, yes, Your Honor. The prosecution wishes to call the investigating officer. <coughs> Please state your name and rank for the record. My name is uh, Inspector Jonathan Karanja, the investigating officer. Mm. And uh, Mr. Karanja, were you present when the complainant came to file her complaint? Yes, Your Honor. After, immediately after the report, we embarked on the investigation to to trace the number that was used to send the SMSs. We confirmed that the sender was Betty Money. We proceeded to arrest her and charge her with life endangerment. Ranja, what made you decide to act on these SMSs? I felt the threats were real and uh, the sender would act on them, uh, especially after Angel told us of the circumstance of her romantic involvement with the accused husband. Thank you, Inspector. That is all, Your Honor. <coughs> Ms. Kamana? Yes, Your Honor. Inspector, how did Betty behave when you arrested her? She was a little nervous, but calm. She explained to us that she was not going to act on the threats, but she was just scaring her. Did she seem violent to you? No, Your Honor. She was well-spoken and well-mannered. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Inspector Karanja, you may step down. Is the prosecution calling any other witness? No, Your Honor. Uh, that will be the close of the prosecution's case. Ms. Kamana? Your Honor, it behoves the prosecution to do more than arraign an accused person in court. They have a huge burden to discharge, and that is to prove all allegations beyond reasonable doubt. It is my humble submission that in this case they have failed to do so. The offence of threat to kill under Section 223 of the Penal Code is a serious offence, carrying a sentence of imprisonment of 10 years. The prosecution has handled this matter rather casually, and, I'm, and I hasten to submit that the accused has no case to answer. Prosecution? I leave it to the court. Very well.
It is uh, wrong to threaten someone's life regardless of the circumstances that uh, provoke one to do so. God forbid if anything happened to the complainant, you are likely to be held responsible. However, In the circumstances of this case, I do not find that all the ingredients of uh, the serious offense as framed in the penal code have been established. I thus find the accused person has no case to answer and I dismiss the case against the accused and acquit her forthwith. The court is a jump. See that? I'm sorry. Mm, no problem. Let's not celebrate just yet. We still have a civil suit between you and Angel. Thank you, Elsie. Thank you, my dear. Congratulations. Thank you. It won't happen again. Are you sure? Yeah, bitchy. Your Honor, I will prove that stress can cause and did cause a miscarriage in this case. I will lead medical evidence to confirm this. The SMS is that Betty Money sent caused so much stress on Angel Momo that it led her to have a miscarriage. Mrs. Money is in fact responsible for this and was a clear and present danger on Miss Momo's life. In a related case whose hearing is consolidated with this one, where Miss Momo mm. seeks maintenance from Mr. Money, I will also prove that Miss Momo and Mr. Mani were cohabiting and in fact have a son together. The 16-month-old boy has been depending on his father since birth. And Mr. Mani should continue to provide financial support to both mother and child, as he always has. Your Honor. Angel Momo is a woman accustomed to sleeping with wealthy men for benefits. When she met Herbert Money, she met a man she could manipulate and use to live a comfortable life without ever working for a shilling. Your Honor, I will prove to this court that Angel Momo has in fact been in several relationships while cohabiting with Herbert Money. The court will be left in no doubt whatsoever that she is a gold digger unworthy of the court's protection. The compensation claim for damages for a miscarriage is misplaced and stinks of one grasping at straws. Very well. Call in your witnesses. I'd like to call in my first witness, Miss Angel Momo. Good morning. Yes, how can I help you? Yes, my name is Renee and I'm here for the internship interview. I spoke to a lady called Pauline and she told me to come today. Yes, I'm Polly. Um, and you are three minutes late. So let's rush before you're very late. Okay, thank you. Follow me. Yes, come in. Interview. Good showing. Thank you for seeing me, Mr. Walker. Uh, good. How are you? Have a seat. Thank you. Your CV is very elaborate. So tell me about yourself and what inspired you to apply here for internship. 
Law has always fascinated me and my family. As a matter of fact, my father and mother are both advocates, although retired now. I have studied law in the university. Can you please identify the man you've been living with for the past two years? He's Herbert's man. He's that man. Is he the father of your child? Yes. He's also the father of the child I recently miscarried. What led you to have a miscarriage? I was under a lot of stress daily. I was so sure my life was in danger. His wife used to send me threatening SMSs almost every day. And for how long did you receive these SMSs for? For two months, continuously. And what action did you take? Of course, I spoke to Herbert about it. He assured me he was going to take care of things, but it never happened. It only got to us. How did this affect you? My blood pressure kept on going up high and high until it was dangerous for the baby. Objection, Your Honor. The plaintiff is not a medical expert. Sustained. What happened to your baby? One night, I received an SMS that she was coming to my apartment to sort me out. I panicked and proceeded to lock all the doors and windows too. Then, my baby stopped to move and I started to bleed. That's when I went to the hospital and they told me that my child had died. I'm sorry. That's when I went to the police and showed them all the SMSs. I had to take action against the woman who killed my baby. And while your life was in danger, where was the father of your children? He stopped seeing me. He stopped sending me money for food. He stopped paying my rent. He completely disappeared from my life. And you have a look at these documents and identify them. There are rent receipts, um, bills, and household shopping receipts that Herbert has been taking care of for the past two years. And you'd like to tender these as your evidence? Yes. Have a look at this document. It's my bank statement. It shows a monthly deposit, a monthly deposit of 100000 from Mr. Herbert's money. Please go through these documents and identify them for the court. They are my medical receipts. Exactly. These are medical bills that Mr. Mani took care of for postnatal and prenatal when Angel Momo was expecting, which clearly showed he took responsibility for his son and he should continue to do so. You'd like to tender these as evidence as well? Yes. None, Your Honor. Good. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Have sir. my PA call you for anything if need be. Thank you, sir. Send in the next person and get me a cup of coffee while you write it. How much time would he spend with you as a family? He always found time to be away from Betty to be with me and his son. We often went on holidays so that we could spend quality time together. And where would you go? And early this year, we went to Zanzibar. We spent one week together. Zanzibar? You said you were going for a telecommunication seminar. That's where we conceived our dead second born. How could you do this to me? You've never taken your legitimate family to Zanzibar, yet you take this, this home. Miss Kamona, control your client. This is a courtroom, not a circus. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Kamona, I expect order in my court. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Miss Shah. Continue. Where else would you go on holiday? Uh, last Easter we went to the Masai Mara. I have, I have photographs. Have a look at these. 
They're the ones of me and Herbert and Junior at various holiday spots in the Mara. You took her to the Mara over Easter? You said you're going to finish the construction that will be. This is money. Take control on yourself. I'm beginning to lose my patience and will hold you in contempt of court. Now, Ms. Kabaruna, I'm sorry. I have what? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Please forgive my client. Carry on, Ms. Shah. Angel, do you have a source of income? No, I don't. Herbert insisted that I should not work or even start a business. He promised that he'd always take care of me. Right now, I don't even have food for my son. I haven't even finished clearing the medical bills from my miscarriage. Thank you, Angel. Thank you, Your Honor. Counsel, would you like to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. Angel, just to go back to that last question. You don't have a source of income now. Did you have one before meeting my client? I was looking for it. Yes or no, please. No. So even after meeting my client, you still don't have a job? No. Mm. When did this love affair begin? December, two years back. December. <coughs> well, looking at the dates on these rent receipts, it only took two months before Herbert Mani started taking care of your every need. You were even receiving a monthly allowance of 100,000 shillings. Who would want to work? He said that he'd take care of me and my son. He loved me that much. Love? Mm. Were you aware that he was a married man? Do you not understand the question? Should I rephrase it? Angel, answer the question. Yes. So it came as no surprise to you when his wife warned you to keep away from her husband. No. Despite the fact that you knew he was a married man, you still chose to have a child with him. Did you two discuss having children? When I, when I found out... Yes or no? No. So I see. You chose to have children, children with him to make sure he would continue to support you financially. Besides, you had no other source of income. You had no other option but to manipulate him to stay in this relationship. Objection. This is harassment of my client. Your Honor, I'm only trying to establish that Angel's only source of income was my client and she would do anything in her power to keep the paychecks coming in. Ms. Kamona, stick to the facts only. I can Since... prove this to the court. Well, then wait for the submission of those facts. Yes, Your Honor. Angel, how many boyfriends did you have when you were seeing my client? I object. Your Honor, this is a simple question the court needs to hear an answer to. To ascertain her fidelity. The court would like to hear the response. There's another man in the life. He's the only man in the life. Liar. Angel, I am so sorry about your miscarriage, but I have to politely ask. Are you sure that Mr. Mani was the father of your child? Or were you in several affairs you didn't know who the father of your child was and you were forced to have an abortion? Objection. My client is clearly being bullied. That question is already answered. Yes, Your Honor. I have no further questions. I'm Peter Sonyaga, a gynecologist by profession. In your opinion, what causes a miscarriage? Miscarriage means aborting of the fetus without the intention of doing so and can be caused by a variety of reasons. Go on, doctor. During pregnancy, a woman's body is very vulnerable to external factors. In case of stress, be it physical or emotional, it may cause high blood pressure and 
irregular hormonal secretion that may lead to the body to reject the baby. I see. You mentioned stress. In your considered opinion, what effect would life-threatening SMSs have on a pregnant woman? In such a circumstances, it's dangerous. It causes emotional instability, thus hormonal instability, which can result to the miscarriage. Thank you, Doctor. Ms. Kamona, any questions? Yes, Your Honor. Dr. Nyaga, other than stress, what else can cause a miscarriage? There's hormonal instability, any form of illness, ingestion of medicine prior to the pregnancy or, or during. There's the overuse of contraceptives, alcohol. So there could be thousands of reasons why Angel had a miscarriage, including genetic disposition of just being unable to carry a child to term. It's a possibility. Can you prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that stress caused her to miscarry? No. Did you handle Angel during her miscarriage? No. Actually, I met her the next day after it already happened. So how can you be certain that it's a miscarriage and not an abortion, when the two cases look similar the next day? Objection. Ms. Kamona. I'm sorry, Your Honor. No further questions. OK. Are there any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. That was our last witness. Ms. Kamona? Yes, Your Honor. All right, proceed. <clears throat> hey, I'd like to give you a simple tip when talking to Mr. Mwako. See, I've worked here long enough. I know how he thinks and what impresses him. When you speak to him, make sure you speak in clear and proper English. Make sure you pronounce the words the right way, like I'm doing. And. You must have a neat face. Look at you. You are dressed like a DJ. You, did, you don't look like you really came for an interview in a law firm. And you, some makeup. I thought wearing too much makeup is... I'm telling you what is going to work. Oh, hello. Yes, I'll send him right now. Mr. Shibuku, how do you know Angel Mwono? I'm apartment two in the watchman where you compound. Please look around this courtroom. Do you see anyone that you recognize? Uh, I know Mzee Bwanamani, who is Kijana Tony Tony. How do you know them? I'm again with Angel. Even Mr. Mani? Of course, he comes to see her every week. After we Tony in Memona Kirara Ko. I'm um, Kirara Uko. He sleeps there. How many men sleep at Angel Momo's house? Many, many men with big cars comes to see her every time. I even have their number plates in the security log book. Mr. Shpiko, please have a look at this. Yes. Your Honor, I would like to tender this as evidence in this case. All the highlighted areas are evidence of Angel's boyfriend to spend the night in her house. The log also indicates what time these cars leave the premises. No further questions, Your Honor. Hmm. Ms. Shah? Thank you. Mr. Shikuku, how did you know that these big cars were going to apartment B2? What about Kaida Kama Habat Natoni Mina Jua and Nando Kukira Siku? But the Kinah again in Brazil and Dike Paro and Nanda. Now, I can take a mean of water, Nichue, Parwa medication, you are Nanda. Security in Razim. I have, I need to record and see. No further question. That is the close of my case. Very well. There being no other witnesses, I would like to bring this session to a close. Um, can I hear your last submissions? Thank you. My client, Angel Momo, was living with Herbert Mani. They even have a son together. When Betty Mani found out about this love affair, she lost it. She then embarked on a mission to make Angel's life a living hell. 
while ensuing confrontations never got physical, she haunted my client, constantly giving her unwanted attention, recently in the form of menacing SMS messages. She threatened my client's life to the point of my client having a miscarriage. Dr. Nyaga testified in this court that any amount of stress on a pregnant woman can be dangerous to both mother and baby. Betty further ensured that Herbert did not take care of his responsibilities and left Angel desperate without anyone to turn to. She single-handedly ruined Angel's life. She should be found liable and judgment entered against her accordingly. My client has been dependent on Mr. Mani and he should continue to take care of his family. He should provide for his son until his son is of age. Your Honor, the court should ensure that Mr. Mani takes care of his parental responsibilities. Your Honor, Betty Manny was fighting for her family. She is the legitimate wife and that is why she is called Mrs. Manny. The discovery of the affair may have made her react emotionally, but she was never of any real harm to Angel or her son. Instead, it is Angel and women like her who prowl on married men for benefits, who should be stopped in their tracks. Angel is manipulative and a proven schemer in ensuring she always has a married man who gives her money. In fact, she has used her son as a meal ticket. What is clear is that Angel is promiscuous and when she discovered she was pregnant, she had no clue who the father was and decided to have an abortion, claiming she had a miscarriage. She conveniently went to see her doctor the next day when all the evidence of the abortion had been wiped clean. What is clear from this case is Angel Momo is nothing but a promiscuous gold digger. I rest my case. The court will examine the witnesses and the testimonies and I will be giving my ruling on Friday at 10 a.m. The court is adjourned. I have come to the decision on the case of Angel Momo versus Betty Mani, and lastly, Angel Momo versus Herbert Mani. After reviewing the evidence before this court, there is no medical evidence that Betty Mani's threats via SMSs caused Angel Momo's miscarriage and thus there's no way of proving the same. I therefore dismiss the case, but due to the special circumstances herein, each party to bear their own costs. On the matter of child support, it was established to my satisfaction that Mr. Mani took responsibility for his son before and after his birth and should continue to do so regularly. This court, acting in the best interest of the child, orders that he will be responsible for his education and basic needs to the accumulated sum of 2 million Kenya shillings. This should send a message to men who have children and do not support them. Kenya shillings 500,000 is to be paid in a lump sum 
which I further direct to be placed in a special interest earning account in favor of the minor. Mr. Money shall pay child support of Kenya shillings 75,000 per month until this court orders otherwise. As for Angel Momo, she is not recognized by law as a wife and thus has no claim for financial support. No compensation or financial upkeep for her. The successful applicant shall have costs of this application. Court adjourned. Well, at least you got child support. That's not enough. Is there something else you can do? Nope. I'm sorry. Thanks. Congratulations. Child support definitely have to be included. Thanks. You did your best. I've given you my best. I stood by you when you had no money. Till we made it as a family. Yet you spite me. Have an affair, have a child. Come on, Betty. You take her to exotic places. Betty, honey, please. I don't think I can be with you anymore. No. I'm too heartbroken to forgive you. Ah. Honey.